from Bali. It's Monday morning and I've spent the past two and a half days borderline bedridden because I got the dreaded Bali belly on Friday. We were going out for pizza on Friday evening, Monica and I, and Monica said, should we go for pizza and a Negroni? And usually, God, this fills me with excitement. I thought, that's, that's strange. I'm not that hungry, but I thought nothing of it. We were riding out to get our pizza. Got there for the pizza and I was looking at the menu and I thought, God, why is, why is nothing exciting me here? Anyway, pizza came, I weirdly struggled through the pizza and the real worry was that I couldn't finish my Negroni. And Monica was like, are you okay? You haven't actually said anything for the whole meal. And I was like, God, I think I've got food poisoning. Things escalated so quickly that I basically had to run from the restaurant to the bike because I knew I was about to collapse and I had a five minute ride which was the most desperate ride with Monica on the back, back to the apartment, threw myself into the bed and I spent the next probably 12 hours throwing up non-stop. It was, I'm not joking, about the worst I've ever felt and that was uh, a culmination of about 36 hours where I couldn't get out of bed and probably just over 48 hours where I only managed to really have some orange juice and four mouthfuls of food with one tiny walk oh, for the best part of two to three days. Today's the first day where I've, I've really properly been able to do anything, but it was, it was savagely awful. Now I'm pretty much fine. We've, well, in fact, we started off just across the road, but we've come over here for a coffee. We're just in the middle of rice fields, paddy fields. It was stunning. I've got a barley bowl because I'm trying to build up my strength as much as possible. These are really popular here. You've got a mixture of fruits and bananas, some granola, very, very popular here. They're all delicious. We started off the Bali vlogs from a very touristy place that was quite busy. So Monica and I yesterday picked a random place on the map to go, hopefully away from all of the crowds. It's about an hour and a quarter away from here and it's picked completely at random. So we're going to head off there in a little bit after I finish this. I'm just delighted that I've got enough strength back because honestly the thought of riding yesterday, the day before, God, it filled me with dread. While we're away, I can keep up to date with all of my favorite magazines, all of my favorite newspapers, with the online digital subscription for magazines, and that's Readly. It is a one-stop shop for all of the magazines that I love back in the UK. I can read all of my favorite magazines, all of the home comforts, when I'm in Bali, whether I'm in Dubai, anywhere in the world. It means that if I'm on a flight, I can download offline magazines and newspapers and happily read as many as I like. It's also incredibly cost efficient because I'll often read three or four different magazines and two newspapers in one flight and it means that I don't have to have three or four different magazines in my bag at any one time and I'm not physically looking for shops that will sell international papers which probably in Bali are fairly few and far between. So. And less waste. Pardon? And less waste. That's a very good point. Less waste because I'm not physically buying any magazines. As you can see here, it starts off on this, the discovery page. And I'll put the screen recording here. You've got recommendations for you and these are recommendations that Readly just happily share. So I've got F1 Ride Magazine, Auto Car Bike Magazine. Then you've got podcasts. And this is a bit I love as well, to keep up to date. Today's papers, City AM, Metro, The Mirror, Me Observer, The Independent. And if I go to my content, you can see here, it's got favorites at the top. And next to favorites, you've got downloads. And this is where you can download any magazines that you want to read, whether you're on a plane or you're in an area with no signal. For example, if you go on a road trip somewhere in Bali and you know there won't be any Wi-Fi, at least you've got something to do in the evenings. But under my favorite sections here, if we click on uh, bike or ride magazine, let's say bike magazine, click on that. You can actually go through all of the old issues. I'm just scrolling through here. Any old issue of these old magazines you can pick, so it's got complete back catalogues. It also means that because there's an almost unlimited selection of magazines, I can get into stuff that I've never previously bought, such as practical classics, 
I found myself loving, absolutely loving this magazine about recommendations for old cars. But let me just show you this quickly. So, if I'm on, or should I say bike magazine, you can open it up, whatever episode or whatever edition you want. And whatever page you're on, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can article view and change the way you look at an article and then you just press X. It's all so incredibly, incredibly user friendly. So if you're interested in that, which I, I really very, very highly recommend, you can get two months subscription free and you can cancel any time you like. If you just click on a link in the written description below, I'll also pin a comment to the top so you can click on that link as well. But Readly, highly recommended. It's a fantastic place to get all of your magazines, all of your newspapers in one place. half an hour in I hope you can hear me it's quite loud and we've just pulled over so Monica can grab a couple of bottles of water and I thought I'd just show you a little bit of a, a street view the traffic hasn't let up yet in half an hour of leaving where we had lunch and we're way way past all of the touristy stuff so this is proper proper local traffic here you can see all of the shops they're just tiny little individual stores everywhere no big shops at all they all look like they're they family run businesses i wanted to take you back here because just past these these little food stops here there is it's actually being worked on now a stunning royal enfield I think it's actually it's not the classic 350 i think it's the classic 500 in green and it looks absolutely beautiful you can see it just behind me there they're currently working on it that must be a custom paint job it looks oh just beautiful beautiful thing they do like the royal enfields here although unfortunately the royal enfield dealership closed which is a shame for me i'm just last 10 meters or so and then i'll flip the camera back to that royal enfield again individual shops all the way along and this is a little perfumery here where i think it must be handmade perfumes and then they bottle it for each individual person it's really interesting there you can see the classic 500 being worked on there they've got a really good custom bike scene here in Bali. I will be able to show you that later, I'm sure. And that just gives a very, very small hint as to what it's like. So I've seen a few lovely, lovely Royal Enfields around and that's definitely one of them. Okay, we've got just to check. Actually, it's a bit more than half now. It's the final 40 minutes to go. And Monica just went to pay. And as soon as you get out of the touristy areas, 
That looks like a huge wad of cash there, yeah. colossal. <laughs> as soon as you leave the touristy areas, this place, pretty big chain supermarket, they only accept local bank cards. Mm -hmm. So that's a word of warning, you need to carry cash around. The only problem with that is, and I remember this from last time being in Bali, the currency is so ridiculously big. One million rupiah is 55 pounds, one million. A standard small meal is about 70,000. That it can often get confusing. I think last time I ended up spending about 50 pounds for a five pound meal a few times because you just get so lost in the amount of zeros around the end of everything. So word of warning, take cash out and when you do pay for stuff, make sure you're not literally paying 10 times the amount you meant to. Monica, how are you feeling first half an hour in? Uh, it's exhausting being in this traffic. It is exhausting, isn't it? Mentally and physically, actually. It's, it's tough. It should get quieter and quieter from here on, I hope. Wow. See, every so often you get something really special. Well done, Monica. Well done. This is spectacular, really. I mean, th this is, must be, real Indonesia. We're a long way from the tourists now, and it just, you have these roads that you're riding along that Monica will have shown, but just behind that one line of small buildings, just luscious, luscious jungle around, and where it's not luscious jungle, it's rice terraces, paddy fields, absolutely everywhere, like we are here now. You can see a man just in the distance with his cap on going along on his little Honda, mountain in the background and the most incredible foliage and, and plants that I've ever seen. I couldn't even name some of them. You've got banana trees everywhere, but some of the, 
the fruit growing on the trees. I, I don't even know what they are. They're gigantic, <laughs> some of them. I'll, after we've eaten, I'll, I'll have to walk you down here and just show you a bit of how, how stunning it is because it really is amazing. I'll include all of the details in the written description. And there's one thing I wanted to show you. Just have a look at this. So we've just ordered this, which is a, a curry. Mm -hmm. Now this is 25,000 and mm -hmm. 25,000 is roughly, uh, it's about, it's about one pound 50. Mm -hmm. One pound fifty. I mean, the prices once you get out of the touristy areas are are just insane. That's again, that's probably about one pound twenty banana pancake. Mm. Banana pancake. Mm -hmm. You get much more for your money. It's infinitely more stunning. Mm -hmm. It's lusher. The air's cleaner. The roads aren't congested now. We're genuinely away from the congested roads, and I cannot say enough amazing things. I'm just looking out onto the paddy fields here, palm trees dotted along with the tree-filled mountain in the distance. It's really special. I thought I'd start a couple of minutes away from where we're eating just so you can get an idea of the surroundings. So just to my left hand side there is a temple. You can see the roofs of it just behind the wall there. To my right, paddy fields, paddy fields with palm trees just lining each individual section of paddy fields with mountains covered in clouds at the very top. And if the, if the microphone picks it up, just the sound of cockerels going all the time, water streaming down from one paddy terrace to the next. So lush everywhere. Apologies, my religious knowledge isn't good enough, but there are a lot of, of temples and religious elements everywhere around in Bali. Freshly planted things here and over here, I can just see Monica in the distance. Let's try and zoom in. That is Monica in the distance, just underneath that roof. It's just spectacular, the fact that you're right next to these water-soaked paddy fields. In the distance there, there are a couple more temples. And all the way along here, stretching from left to right, it's thick, luscious jungle leading all the way up to these mountains. And this is the path that we go down to get to, hello, hello. Warung de Taman and this is the place that we're going to haven't had the food yet but just purely going on a location point of view it is highly recommended I'll let you know what the food's like but everything apart from the food so far is, is first first class and some of these prices are really incredible paddy fields just no one around this is the amazing thing when you get out of the tourist here there's no one around and it looks really immaculately clean. We've seen so many people working on the paddy fields, working on just tiny little motorbike shops with a Honda sign above it, just fixing people's bikes, changing the tires, people queuing up for hand pumped fuel. You can see there, it's, it's a really, it's a really wet heat as you get down closer into the thicker, denser jungle. There's a hammock there and we turn right into this bit. In fact, I'll do a little shortcut through here. Which way shall I go? I'll go this way. So when you come in, this is, this is an area for people to eat. Everyone will get their own little individual booth. I think the etiquette is you take your shoes off completely protected from the rain. There are also power sockets, which is brilliant because we're almost out of juice on our phones. I love these little old children's play areas. Everything is completely saturated. A couple of uncovered, uncovered tables and some incredible fruit. Apologies, I can't actually name what that fruit is. But really, these are everywhere, amazing fruit. And then over there, you've got plenty of coconuts and bananas. And I think the food's just arrived.
So Monica was chatting to the waiter and he recommended a rice terrace that we must go to. And of course, being a local, it's not going to be anywhere touristy at all. Slight problem, it's 20 minutes in completely the opposite direction to home. And the sun will set, I think, maybe in about two hours or so. So we may be riding back at night, but to get a tip off like this, I think it's unmissable. And the scenery, the further we get away from all of the the kind of the southeastern bit the touristy bit on the southern coast of the island is it just gets more and more spectacular just the continuation of rice terraces everywhere we're getting closer and closer now to these mountains and you can see the clouds just sitting on the top of them i i'm guessing we're going to end up somewhere around these terraces or just behind them there but it really is a very, very special place. It feels like you're going back in time. Forget about the vehicles. This could easily be 80, 100 years ago or so. Really beautiful buildings as well. Got the bill, paid for the bill at the restaurant. 60,000 Indonesian. And that roughly it translates, sorry, that roughly translates to, and get ready for this, three pounds. Mm -hmm three pounds for two of the most exquisite curries, really two of the best meals I've had here. It was stunningly good, fresh ingredients, and two lemon teas, three pounds. To give you some relativity, even compared to the rest of Bali and the touristy area, this is significantly cheaper than one main meal in the touristy area of Bali. So one main course, in touristy Bali is more than the entire meal for two people we had here. It's phenomenal value. So anyway, enough talk. We've got to head off. We're going in this direction. I think we're going to be meandering up and down all the time because there are no straight roads here. I can't wait. It's amazing.
Well, we've come to the end of the line because there's a sign there saying no entry, at least on vehicles, except for farmers. No, you need to cover your legs with that. Shirts and sleeves. Shirts, shirt with sleeves. Sarong, oh yeah, okay. Okay, so, yeah, you're right. Hindu temple, which I wasn't sure. I know the majority of Bali is Hindu, but I think it's Buddhist <laughs> as well, some of them. Um, so anyway. This doesn't make sense. Pretty much. Wait. Oh, I know this is yours, Monica, because you always have your sleeves on the inside. Um, so all of, pretty much all the temples you see, they're all Hindu. And this is one of them. And the, it's fascinating seeing the different rules that each religion has. Have a look at some of these. It's fascinating. So you have to wear the Balinese gear. You, you know, you which have you to, do. You, which you have to cover up a bit. Sarong, I think we'll just about get away with is it, it here. Is that your sarong? Yes. Yes. It, in fact, let me try and get that round a bit more. I think mine looks better. Do my best better. to respect the religion. Uh, but it's Make fascinating. Make it longer. Yep. Cool. Make it longer. There we go. There you go. It, you can't enter. Do if, the buttons up. You can't enter. I'll do the buttons up. If you're menstruating, pregnant, have a child that has umbilical cords still attached. Someone in your immediate family has died within the past three days. Okay, Monica, I'll do this quickly. So you do the buttons up. It's so interesting, isn't mm -hmm. it? Those list of rules. So let's go in. There are a lot of references to tigers here. And Monica, Monica, do you want to share the fun fact <laughs> about tigers? I'm putting you on the spot here. Or shall I say it? <laughs> I don't know, that's not confirmed. You were fairly confident about <laughs> 10 minutes ago. I'm going to share the fact. Uh, the, I think the last tiger in Bali, it's okay, I have just Googled it, Monica, you're okay. Last tiger in Bali, I think, I think was officially recorded in 1930, but they say that there may have been a few other sightings up until the 50s. So to be safe, 1950s was the last time Mm -hmm. uh, there was any tiger here in Bali. They've been extinct for around 70 years, which is, well, it's a huge shame. But imagine mm -hmm. that. You, you really can picture it, can't you, with this scenery. Mm -hmm. Tigers would have been all over the place up until they were hunted to extinction. So, going into a Hindu temple. Mm -hmm. It feels like we're in an episode of Tomb Raider or something like that, or in the Tomb Raider film, doesn't it? The lusciousness of the jungle. And there really is no one here at all. The roads are all dead. We've seen no one coming up here apart from a few, I think, farmers and people like that who are just going along this tiny track to the left-hand side. We're, we're away from it all here. interesting thing about Bali actually Indonesia in general is a very very Muslim country but Bali is the the exception to the rule I think it may be the only island I think or one of the only islands in Indonesia that is predominantly Hindu mm -hmm. it's it's not a predominantly Muslim country and it's I don't hundred percent know why that mm -hmm. is but it. Um, it makes it feel very different, of course, because you have all of the Hindu temples and it really is a very unique place within Indonesia. Another thing, it's just gigantic.
Well, we made it. I'll, I'll find out the name of this rice terrace because it is away from the touristy track and I can't exactly remember the name, but I will find it, put the details in the written description. I mean, the views speak for themselves. It's, it's as pretty as anyone I've ever seen. It's completely mind-blowingly spectacular. Rice terraces, as far as the eye can see, all the way up until the edge of the mountain behind us, just the sound of water everywhere. It feels like you're a million miles from anywhere and it feels like you could be 200 years ago. It really is. It's a very, very special place. One thing I've noticed that I find quite interesting, I think each individual section of this rice terrace is owned by a specific family. So you could, for example, have a husband and wife and maybe a couple of children working on each individual rice terrace. So that's why you'll often see one or two scooters parked at each individual section. And you'll also get every so often these huts. And I think that's where they can have lunch and just escape from the searing heat. When, when the clouds aren't around. So I think, I think to the best of my knowledge, that's how it works. Right, we'll wrap it up there. I mean, it really has been an incredibly special day. Remember, if you're interested in the Readly subscription, you get the first two months free. You can cancel at any time. All the details in the written description, including the link, and also there's a link in the pinned comment. Thanks so much, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this little road trip day. Oh, I've absolutely loved it. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel and we'll see you all in the next one.